This morning we are in the Old Testament. And our pastor is going to bless us from the book of Ezekiel. Book of Ezekiel. And then if you move your finger over to chapter 47. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 5. Ezekiel chapter 47, 1 through 5. If you said, have it, said, have it. If not, still looking. Old Testament, mm -hmm. book of Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 through 5. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from underneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. From the front of the temple faced east, the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple's south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate, and he led me around on the outside of the outer gateway mm -hmm. that faces the east and there was water running out of the right side mm -hmm. verse 3 and when the main and when the man went to the east with the line in his hand he measured 1000 cubits and he brought me through the water and the water came up to my ankles mm -hmm. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water, and the water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water, and it came up to my waist. Mm -hmm. And the final verse, again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep water in which one must swim a river that could not be crossed. The word of God to the people of God. This morning. This morning's message is coming from the book of Ezekiel. Amen. Verse 1 of 47. Chapter 47 is the highlight verse for this particular message this morning. The word says, Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from underneath the threshold of the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced east. Water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come this morning as preaching time. We pray that you will come and present this so simple, so clear, but with so much power that from the youngest of age to the youngest at heart can Thank you, Father. receive it as chewable and swallowing Amen. that food. Yes. Prepared for the intake of What's the spirit name, that will cure the soul and lift us up above the fray of our personal situation. Yes. Allow us to be carried away yes. in the spirit of knowledge that teaches us that God is Yes, Father. God will. Yes, Father. And God will forever be. Yes. yes, Father. It ain't nobody like Jesus. Yes. God, we thank you for this message. Mm -hmm. We thank you for this congregation. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for that Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
that sits down deep in us and gives us that what we need. Oh, glory. When we need it, how we need it, and the function it performs in us that allows us, although we're happy in the Lord, it just keeps on giving what we need. Yes. The fountain never stops for us. Oh, yes. Lord, we know we need it all the time, day and night, night and day, but God, somehow you've always done that. Yeah. It takes us, some of us sometimes to understand that you never sleep or slumber, yeah. that you never take a vacation, yeah. that you never take a time off, that you never punch in late nor leave early. Yes. 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 But we'll get that. We'll get that with your word and your wisdom that you place in us that we will understand that you are my everything. Oh, yes. Nothing I can put first but you. God, if you bless this house, bless the ones that are here, bless the ones that I pray in your name will come and bless this word. Send it out through you. Let this smear facade that's standing here. Boys be removed and they just feel the power and majesty of God. And it professes thus say the Lord. If you do that, we will surely give your name to praise. And the one that sits high and look low. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This message this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is known as the prophet of vision. It is by way of Ezekiel that we have received reports of many strange dreams, visions, and creatures. It was he. You recall that reported a vision of a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Yes. It was Ezekiel who reported a vision of strange beasts that had the form of a man with four faces and four wings. Yes. It was Ezekiel who took us along with him as the hand of the Lord was upon him and set him down in the valley which was full of dry bones. Now in this text, Ezekiel shares with us his experience of waiting in the water, which flowed from the temple. Yes, here Ezekiel shares with us an experience in which he was led through water that got deeper and deeper. But before we go with Ezekiel into the water, I think it would be uh, do us well to see where that water was coming from. Ezekiel said, I saw water coming out from the underneath the threshold of the temple. The water was seeping from beneath the door of that temple. And biblically speaking, water is a symbolic of life and refreshment, the Spirit of God, the Word of God. So then, it is of interest that the water was seeping from beneath the door. The door was not open so that it could flow out. No, the door was closed, yet the water could not be contained. It seeped out from beneath the door. Oh, brothers and sisters, most churches that I know of have an unofficial closed door policy concerning the Word of God. Although many of us say that we are missionary Baptists, the truth of the matter is, is that in many cases our name should be changed to stationary Baptists. We uh, specialize in proclaiming the word within the doors. Most of our witnesses, witnessing and testifying, occurs within these doors. But bless God today. Just like the water which Ezekiel saw seeping from beneath the door, the word of God cannot be contained. It cannot be contained between these four walls or behind closed church doors. 
somehow or another, the word gets out. Yes, the word seeks out its right of our closed doors and closed mouths. Another thing of interest is the progression of the depth of the war. The further it went away from the temple, the deeper it got. Let's take a few minutes this morning to look at Ezekiel's prophecy. I want you to notice three aspects of this prophecy that applies to you and me today. I would like to help each of us learn to wade out a little bit deeper in the things of the Lord. I want to challenge each person that is in the attendance today. As the Lord helps me, I would like to preach about when we wade in the war. First, the scripture says Ezekiel surveyed the river. This river is in type of a Holy Spirit. There are three ways in which this river represents the Spirit and His work in the life of the believer. First, in its source, the throne of God, the Holy Spirit, like this river, came directly from the Father's throne. And second, in its course, from the altar, notice that this river came from the altar or the place where the sacrifice was made. The water of life, the precious Holy Spirit, comes directly from the altar of Christ's sacrifice, which is the cross. The Holy Spirit came only after the death of Christ on that cross. And number three, in its force. Notice four great truths about this river that made it very special. These four truths make the Holy Spirit special as well. It had no feed or stream. There was no need for anything to flow into the river to give it forth, give it size or power. When it left the throne, it possessed all that it needed. The Mississippi is less than three feet wide where it begins. But after all the feeder streams flow into it, it becomes a mighty river that is well over a mile wide where it enters into the Gulf of Mexico. God's river needs no feeder stream. God doesn't need the world or anything that is in it. And he certainly doesn't need me and you to get his work done here in this world. You see, God supersedes us. He supersedes this world. He will get the job done in spite of you and me. His river needs no feeder strength. Notice that the Bible says he saw. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel said, I saw. Sadly, many hear the gospel call and they see what the Spirit can and is doing in the lives of others. Yet, that is as far as they get. However, that isn't far enough to save the many see the river flowing by, but they never get wet for the this river to do you any good. You have to get over in it. You can't stand and look at the water. You got to get in the water. You got to wade over in it. As the man in Ezekiel's vision measured the river, he carried Ezekiel along with him. As a result, the prophet was led into an ever-deepening war. God wants to do the same thing in your life today. Notice how Ezekiel's venture speaks to us as believers today. The word says he waded in ankle deep. This represents the step of faith that saves the soul. It is truly great to be saved, but it isn't the end. Yes, he brought us out, but he also wants to lead us on. See, many stop right here and never go one step further with God. There's 
much more to be saved than just getting saved. Yes. This is where the waiter stands. Yes. Those who get saved and refuse to grow in the Lord are just what this they just uh, dabblers. You know how you go to the water and you just put your hand in and you, you quiver around and say, oh yeah, that's water. Come on now, come on now. They spend all of their time in the shallow end of the pool after the wave, rather than to wade out in that deeper water. You see, they miss the blessings of that deeper life in Christ. Uh -huh. These people are in that total and absolute control of their life. They don't want no change. They talk that talk, but they don't want to get deep. They don't, they don't want to read a little bit more. They don't want to pray a little bit harder. They don't want to missionary a little bit more. They just want to come to church. And sit down. Have you ever watched the children in the kiddie pool? They remind me a lot of church members today. They are yelling and screaming, wanting somebody else's pool to. Toys, doing their best to splash somebody and push someone else on. Sound just like many of the folks in our churches, doesn't it? They always got an idea, but they want somebody else to do it. Uh -huh. Then it says he waded in knee deep. The knees speak of prayer. This represents a life that is learning dependence upon the Lord. This is the person who prays and trying to live their life in faith before the Lord. Uh -huh. Many never reach even this shallow level of maturity in the Lord. You, you need to remember that no person will ever stand taller than when he does on his knees. Yes, yes. You see, those who are at this level know something of the power of the river. Yes. They can feel its power as it rushes past but they aren't really affected by it. They are still standing on their own two feet. They are in control of their lives and aren't being supported by the river. And then the Bible says he waded in loin deep. The loins are uh, emblematic of strength. This speaks of spiritual power in our lives. When one has waded out waist deep into the river, more of the river and less of the man is seen. When we have waded out this far, we can feel the power of the river and others can see its effects on us. This level of maturity is rarely reached, but when it is, you can't hide its effect in your life. It will tell on you. As deep as this level of spiritual growth is, it is still not as deep as we can go. The few who are at this level of spiritual maturity have lost some control over themselves. They are often picked up by the river and move a few feet at a time. But still they are close enough to the shore to be able to stand if they need to. They, they are still in control. Come on now, come but on at now. this point, Ezekiel has reached a place where the river is in control. Right. It takes him where it will. He has no power over his destination. He is at the mercy of the river. Yes. You see, this represents the highest spiritual level that any believer can reach in this life, it couldn't pass it over. It just doesn't get any deeper than this. Yes. There are three reasons why I can say that this is the deepest you can ever get as a Christian. When you wade out this deep, you have moved beyond your ability. And Ezekiel was at the total mercy of the river. Far too many like the safety of the shore. The person who has reached this level of spiritual maturity has moved beyond himself 
and has placed himself under the control and command of God. This is what true spiritual maturity is all about. It's about coming to the end of ourselves and understanding that there is no way that we can ever do it on our own. We must come to the place where we realize who is in control. You see, God does not want me to get where I can. He wants me to get where I can. When you wade out this deep, you have ceased to support yourself. Ezekiel is no longer waiting. He's just resting. He is in charge, isn't in charge. He has given himself over to the power of the river. You see, God is in the business of taking his people through. Isaiah 43 says, when thou passest through the water, I will be with thee, and through the river, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Right, 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 right. Isaiah 54. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Yeah. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, yeah. and the right, their righteousness is of me, yeah. saith the Lord. Yeah. Yes. Right. You see, the deeper you go, the harder it is to jump out. Yeah. When you are in the kiddie pool, yeah. you can jump in and out whenever you feel like. Yeah. When you are knee deep and low and deep. It's just a short hike back to the safety of the shore. Yeah. But when you have placed yourself at the mercy of the river, it's a whole lot harder to get back out again. What I'm saying is that in an, an ever deeper spiritual life is a hedge against failure. Get in as deep as you can. <laughs> just how deep have you waited? Are you still in the shallow end, or are you at the mercy of the river? You see, we need a deeper walk with the Lord. Yes. If that is going to take place, then we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to be sure that we are in the river. Yes. Hard to get taken away if you're not in the water. Come on, Come on, Second, we need to get away from the shore and move into that deep water. And third, all, we all need to come to the place where the river is in absolute control of our lives and our destiny. Yeah. What do you need to do today? You need to take a little walk with Jesus. Yeah. You need to allow him to lead you over into the deep of water. Yeah. You have to lead, allow him to be your security blanket, your uh, swim instructor, and your life dog. Let alone your life preserver. Amen? So if you see the water, which is a spiritual walk, just get in it deep. You ain't going to drown. You ain't going to suffocate. It ain't going to kill you. What you're going to find out is that's a pleasant place. You won't even feel the weight of the world. You know when you float, you know nothing to hold your feet down. That's when you shout me. That's when you praise the Lord. That's when you lift it up holy hands. That's when you run and don't walk. That's when you shout and don't whistle. That's when you clap. You can't be stuck. Hell, Jesus, all about your problem. You see, the deeper you get in with Jesus, the less you have to be. Let Jesus swim for you and with you. He will take your safety and take you safely to show up. You, you won't have to worry about even getting back. He'll ask you to get on his back. Are you ready to go back show? Uh -huh. You see, he, he got a spot for him. Jesus said, I will never leave you. That's why he died on Calvary's cross. To take away your sin. To allow you 
that we've waited out so far, some of us are drowned. Oh, yes. But if you reach out for it, he's going to reach down. The word says, regardless of if he had to reach way down, if the water is up on your knees, and you have lost your breath and faith to go down, you just reach your hand up, and he's going to reach down. I don't care if the water is a mile deep. His arms are long enough to reach down. I, I promise in the name of Jesus, whatever you fall, whatever depth you fall, whatever you think you can't come out of, he provides your option. He is your friend. He is your freedom. He is your salvation. He is your life, your friend, and your Oh, yes. In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh -uh.